You're welcome to this physics laboratory class. And I'm sure you'll be wondering, for those of you who are teachers and students, you'll be wondering what we are going to do in this year's physics practical. And I have come with a solution. And I'm very happy because I know you are going to enjoy it. First of all, we are talking about YEC 2024 physics practical on electricity. And this is where it gets somehow confusing to some students. But don't worry. By the time you finish with me in this class, your questions will be answered. All right. We have this. This is what Wayek will give you. We'll call it white paper. Wayek is going to give you this apparatus. Then with this apparatus, you can now, from that, predict the kind of question that they will be coming. Now, from this apparatus, we are able to use all of them in this setup for your physics electricity experiment. However, now let's go through this because there are some people that may not really know what these are. So that is what I'm going to explain. The first thing they said is two resistance wires of different resistances and 100 cm length. And I have these two wires right now. These two wires. The one here is constant. But they didn't tell us the name of the wires we are going to use. But then we decided to use a constant turn wire and a copper wire. So you can see them. So if you are a physics teacher, maybe you want to set up, you can ask for this. So these are the two resistance wires. The next one is the meter bridge. And I'm sure some of you may be asking, what is meter bridge? And I have this for you. If you look at this, this is a meter bridge, not this one. I've already connected this. So this meter bridge, if, if, there are two things that look like this for physics experiment. The one we call um, potentiometer, but it's different from meter bridge. If you look at meter bridge, you see a gap from here to here. There is a gap here provided, and there is another gap also provided here. So that is how meter bridge is. And then a, a length, 100 cm of wire there for us to use. And I'm going to explain what this is all about. Because this meter bridge came from Wisdom Bridge. What do we use it for? For finding an unknown resistance in a circuit. All right, so after the meter bridge, the next one is called the galvanometer. What is galvanometer? Look at the galvanometer here. The difference between galvanometer and other measuring apparatus in physics is the letters you see in front of it. Galvanometer is rated G. They will write G here. But if it is voltmeter, they will write V. And if it is ammeter, they will write capital A. And the galvanometer must surely go to the middle of the meter bridge. So the middle and the other arm or the terminal of the galvanometer is going to what we call a jockey. What is a jockey? The jockey is just one um, apparatus with an edge, like a knife edge where you can use to make a contact on the length of the wire to find the length which is equivalent to resistance. All right. So the next thing here is key and switch. There are different designs for key and switch, but the one I'm using is this. This is the switch. OK, this is the key. Or sometimes we call it key plug. And this is the, okay, this is the key, and this is the switch. The switch is the on and off. On, when you close, it's on. When you remove, it's off. So that's why we call it switch. But this is the key. So the next one is, OK, talk about the cell. The cell there is this. You know, sometimes they say that a cell is singular, battery is plural. So but I'm using this. This is also a cell. The whole of the arrangement is a cell. Because what do they do? They generate the potential difference to push the current in the circuit. So I decided to use this 1.5 double, which is 3 volts. All right, one standard resistor. One standard resistor. Why do we say standard resistor? Because the name of, of the value of the resistance will be written on the body. And this is one ohm resistor. And that is what we have here. Then they say other necessary materials. This one, they want you to use your sense. I decided to come with a meter rule because I have to measure the length of the wires. This wire, I have to measure its length. So I need this meter rule. And as well, I think I need voltmeter. Why? I need to measure the value of the voltage. 
the value of the voltage I'm using, I mean the EMF of this. That is why I need it. Because remember, they say a cell of E. They didn't tell us the value of the EMF. So probably, Wayek is going to ask you, measure and record your E. Anyhow they want to, let them bring, we are waiting for them. And this is how the experiment is set up. Now, with all this experiment, this is how they are written in the board. You see how the seat for this is? You can see how they are in real life, but see how the board makes them look. So that is where the confusion is. But however, this is E, the battery or the cell. This is here. That is recorded E. This is the symbol for the switch. That is this. The lines you are seeing is nothing but the wires. Then this particular sign is for rheostat. Have I talked about rheostat? No. Rheostat is another thing for controlling current. Sometimes they use it for voltage divider in a circuit. Voltage divider or controlling current. You know, sometimes you have to control current. You know, that is what this rheostat is. And uh, it, it has a lot of resistances. Because for you to control current, you need to vary resistance. That is what this is doing. And this is the symbol for it. From A to C is this length of this meter rule. So anywhere you call your A will be your A. Anywhere you call your C will be your C. Why? Because there is a zero end here, zero to 100. There is also zero to this side 100. Any part you want to use to set it up, fine. All right, that is what we have here. Then this G is the galvanometer. And this line here is the jockey. This jockey, this particular thing you're seeing is the jockey here. And this one ohm resistor, label S, because the question says we have to label it R sub X. And this is this one ohm resistor. I'm going to put it here in the right hand side or left hand side, as the case may be. Then D to L is where this wire is going to go into. This wire. This wire I'm going to put. I will connect one side to this part and then connect the other part to L and measure the length. All right. So these are what I'm... So when I'm doing with constantan wire, if I'm done with constantan wire, I will repeat the experiment with a copper wire and then compare the two. So at the end, I am going to have... They say I should measure L sub X, L sub P, and evaluate R1 equal to this. I want to explain this. Why this? Why this? Why this? I, I am going to do this for the first wire, and I'm repeating it for R2 for the second wire. The question is, why this? Let me talk about this galvanometer. There's something we call balance point of a galvanometer. The balance point of a galvanometer is where the, the galvanometer comes to zero end at a given length. We we'll call it the balance point. And what does the balance point mean? At that balance point, between D and B, the potential difference is, is the same, is zero. Between D and B, there is no potential difference. What do I mean by this potential difference? Uh, potential difference is just like, let me just explain this. If you on your tap, water starts gushing out, right? Because there is a part you provided for the water to gush out. But when you close it, water is not flowing. So zero potential, there is no potential. All right. Now, meter bridge came from a wisdom bridge. Wisdom bridge says at the balance point that R1 all over R2 is going to be equal to R3 all over R4. This is something we are doing here. And this gave birth to this equation. So at balance point, what happened is this. R1 at balance point, this place is what I'm going to be calling my R1 because this is going to be varying. It's going to vary for 80, 90. I mean, it's going to vary for 90, 80, 70, and 60. This R1 right now. So at the balance point, when galvanometer is recording zero, R1 all over R2, you are going to have R1 all over R sub X. R1 over Rx, then which is going to be equal to LP over Lx. LP all over L sub X. This is why we have that. Therefore, if I make R1 the subject formula, R sub 1 the subject formula, I'll say that R sub 1 is equal to LP all over LX. 
or multiply by Rx. So for this, I'm going to label my L R1 and all stuff. So ladies and gentlemen, if you are ready, we are going back to the lab for us to carry out this experiment. And then on this part of analysis, we are going to be writing our table. I'm going to show you how to write your table and the best way why I could prefer you do it. All right. After the diagram and um, the instruction and the setup, we have to carry out the experiment. Remember, the experiment must be done according to the setup, according to the diagram you are given in your instruction. Anything outside the diagram, you may have a problem. All right, from what I am given, and the first one is from the zero end, that is what matters. Start from the zero end, and that zero end is A. That is where you connect your E, which is the battery or the cell. So this is where my battery starts right now. I have to connect my battery to this part, which is zero end, because if you look at the meter rule here, zero end started here. So I am moving from zero end to the battery. From the battery, I will go to the key. This is my key. Then from my key, I will go to the real start. Some people, we are asking what the real start does. I'm going to show you, because what real start does is to control the quantity of current that this galvanometer is going to be recording. So that's real start. And real start ends at 100 cm. Remember, this is a meter rule from zero end from where the battery started and where the real start ended. Now, the instruction says that this one ohm resistor must be connected at right as the left hand side. So, starting here and also the diagram, this is my left hand side and that is where my galvanometer is standing. So, I mean, my resistor is. So, this is the resistor. So, at the middle, the middle is where my, my galvanometer is going to stand. The first entrance here and the other side is where the jockey will be connected to. Then we get to this point which is the D from the diagram is D. And that D which is this one is where the wire enters. So from D to L is what I'm going to measure. I am going to measure it with my with my meter rule. If I measure it with my meter rule, whatever I have, I will use it and connect to the other end of the terminal of the galvanometer of the meter bridge. So that is what I have done. So let's start. Now, according to the instruction of the question, the, what we do is we measure D to L 90 cm. So I'm going to measure now. So, I am using this first wire, which is the constant time wire. After the constant time wire, I'm going to use another copper wire to carry out the experiment as well. So let's measure. I'm going to measure. Let me just keep it like this. I'm going to measure my, my 90. All right. So this is my 90 at this point. This is my 90. I'm picking it there. So everything I'm going to do is based on what I have here. So this 90, I will connect 90. Make sure the two wires don't join. Once they join, your experiment will not be good because it shouldn't join. So I'm measuring, I will put it here and tight it. So you are tightening to avoid fluctuation of current. All right, I have tightened that part, fastened it here. So I will separate the wire very well. I don't need a meter. Now, I have done that. So the next thing I'm going to do is to use my jockey to find the balance point. The balance point is where my galvanometer record zero. I will make, make, record that length. Okay, let's, so let's start. I'm closing my key first. When I close my key, I will use my, my jockey. Now, before that, 
If I put place this joker at this point, see what real start does. You see, it has given me full scale deflection. So I have to control the current by you know bringing the current to a concise level. Remember why I said other materials and their list of apparatus. So they may ask us to use ammeter to control and record the value of current at that point. So let's move. So if I move this part, I'm not sliding. Some, um, they say that one of the instructions is I shouldn't slide. So I'm not sliding. I'm just moving gently on the wire, looking for my balance point where this will be zero. So remember. Remember, if, you are, if it's not connected, it will record zero, and you mistakenly take that part. So you need to be making sure that your galvanometer, your jockey is touching the meter room, the wire on the meter room. So keep moving as it's going. This is what I am seeing from my, my instrument. So let's keep going. Remember, you have to avoid error due to parallax while you are reading. So you see. This is where I'm having at one, at one CM. Remember, if I move down, it changes. If I move up, it increases. At one CM, I'm having a balance point. So that is my balance point. So I'm going to record. I'll have LX, L sub X, which is in centimeter, 1.00. Now, remember, LP is going to be the rest of the meter rule after the 1 cm. So that is going to be L sub P in cm as well. And that is going to be 90, 99 cm, 99.00 cm. Then the next thing I'm supposed to record is R. R, it should be in ohm. So what should this R be? This R is according to this. So it's going to be LP over L1 multiplied by Rx. Rx is the value of the resistor, which is 1 ohm. So I'm going to say LP divided by this. So 99 divided by 1 is still 99. Times 1 is still 99. So this is 99.00. Okay, so that is the value of the current at that point. So the next thing I'm going to do is to, to change the length of the wire and repeat the experiment. All right, so I'm going to measure another one. So this time I'm going to measure 80. Remember, this is the guide. And remember, the question may change. So, so this is 80 cm. Now, at this 80 cm right now, I'm taking it to the other terminal. So separate the wire as well. These are one of the precautions. Make sure the wires don't join. So I will close my key again as usual. As I close my key, I will start. It seems like the balance point is at this side, so I don't think I have to waste my time. But then for the sake of... So you see it's coming close to zero, coming close to zero. Wow, that is zero. 1.5 cm. 1.5 cm. 1.5 cm is the new balance point. So this is 1.50 cm. So that is going to be 90, 100 minus 1.5 is going to give you 98. 0.50. So what am I going to do? 98.5 divided by 1.5. Then I'm going to have 
98.5 divided by 1.5 times 1, 65.67, 65.67 is going to be the next resistor at that point. Okay, so I'm going to the next one. I will measure 70. My 70 is here. This is my 70 cm. So at 70 cm, I will close my key and look for the balance point. Look for the balance point. Oh, okay. Two. It's looking interesting. So, two. 2.00. Um, 2.00. So, that is going to be 98. 98.00. 98 divided by 2, of course, is going to be 48. Okay, 49. 49 times 1 is still 49. 49.00. So this is what you are going to keep doing. Uh, let's do 60, and that will be the final. So you do 60. One of the precautions, don't allow the wires, the constant time wires to join on LD terminal. And also open your battery, white when no taking reading to avoid loss of energy. Okay, 60. Oh, my table should have length as well. So 60, I'm going to, I will include the length on my table. So by, by estimation, I think I should be having two, 2.5 or something more than two, two in my next reading. So what I, like I said before, my table, my table of values should have L in CM. So this is 90.00, this is 80.00, and this is 70.00, and this is 60.00. All right, so I will close my key. When I close the key, I will carry on. So let's start coming. Okay, let me even show you at this point. See what's happening. Okay, so gently, I'm not sliding hide, hard. It's gently I'm doing it. So sliding is not one of the things you should do should be making point, but then I mean no harm. Oh, correct, correct. Right? And uh, that is the balance point. So if I move any more like this, yes, it will move to the other part of this. So I'm recording 2.6, mm, approximately 2.600. So Ninety seven point four, ninety seven point four zero. So ninety seven point four divided by two point six, thirty seven point five, thirty seven point four six. All right. So if you look at the table, you see the trend ninety nine sixty five forty nine. So it's coming down and if you also look at the length, the length here also is reducing. And that is the length here as well. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is the first one. We are going to change the wire according to the question. 
that is where we are going to record our L, our, our, our R2. We are going to change this wire, which is the cost and time wire. So I'm done with this wire right now. So I'm going to form a new table. My new table is going to have R2. So I'm going to have, I will repeat everything I did before for the second part of this experiment. So I'm going to have L is still going to be my L. So let me include it here. So I'm going to have LX2. Let me call it S sub L sub X2. But then LP, I was using P. P is the first wire. I'm calling it L, P. OK, no, I'm not using P again. I'm using Q. So that is why if you look at this, my equation, I call it LQ when I change the wire to another set of wire. So instead of calling LX1, I'm calling it LSQ. That means the length of the wire at the balance point for a new wire, which is copper right now. So this is going to be my R2. At the end, I'm going to plot a graph of R2 versus R1. R2 against R1. All right, let's go. I'm having the next wire, and this is my copper wire. I'm going to place it at this point. And it's going to be designated at that point. Okay, so I'm measuring 90. So this is my 90. 90 cm. All right, I will close my key. Then I'll use my juki to find the balance point. Okay. If you are seen, you will see what is going on here. I will still maintain my real start. It's changing, going this way when I'm moving this way. Because they don't have the same resistance. Shifting. So my balance point is somewhere here, so let me look for it. Good. At this point, 47. 47 from zero end. 47 cm. So I'll open my battery. So 47. So that means this, my LXQ is 47.00, and then LQ is going to be 53.00. Remember, 100 minus this is giving me this. So the rest of the things I'm going to do is to say that LQ divided by L, LSQ multiplied by 1 is going to give me R2. So I'm going to have 53 divided by Yes, 53 divided by 47. I have 1.13. 1.13. So this is having 1.13. That is, I'm maintaining two decimal places. So that's my value for that one. All right. So I'm having the next one, which is measure 80. to measure 80.
So at this point is 80. Mm -hmm. That is my 80. So I'll pick it up there. All right, the next thing is I will close my key. I'll use my jockey to find my balance point. So let's see what's going to happen. It's moving this direction. It's moving, shifting this way. So let me come back to see where, where the balance point will be. If I move this way, it's out. Fifty-four point five. That's my balance point. Fifty-four point five. So fifty-four point five. So that's going to be fifty-four point five zero. And hundred minus fifty-four point five zero is going to be forty-five point five zero as well. So I'm going to say that. 45.50, 45.5, divide by 54.5, having 0 0.83, 0 0.83. I am done. That is no need. Because that is the trend. And this is, as this is going down, and this is also going down, so it's going to have a straight line graph, period. So that is what we are to find. Let me do one last one. Lastly, to confirm, you know, we have to do the third one, to confirm that there is a trend. That trend, I want to have something lower than 8.3. So All right, finally, I'm closing my key and I'm moving. You can see my galvanometer is moving. When I'm here, it's out. Let me come back somewhere here. Let me come back somewhere here. All right. 50. Oh. 58.8, 58.8, okay, so I'm having L, Q, yes, L, X, okay, 58.80, for 1.2, wow, for 1.20, so that is it. So if we now have this, 58.8 divided by 41.2, correct. I have, excuse me, so um, LQ, okay, sorry, is 41.2 divided by 58.8, 0 0.7, 0 0.70. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is coming down and this is also coming down. This is going to give us a straight line graph and, and that will be a perfect example of the practical and that is what we expected. Thank you very much for being part of this lesson and remain blessed.